Do I do all of my own editing? I get asked this question maybe once a month and the answer might surprise you. No, I mainly direct and then I have a makeup team, I have a videographer, I have an editing team. I'm just kidding, I do all my own editing. But one thing a lot of people don't realize is that me doing all of my own editing influences the kind of content I make and how much content I can actually produce. So first of all, I am an anomaly. Let's start there. Am I the best at cosplay, acting, editing, video? No, I am not. But I am pretty unique in that I do combine a lot of those own things with my own skill sets to create something different. Does me actually working more hours and working harder make me any better than anyone or automatically have more skill than someone? No. At minimum, it just means I have less hours to do other things. Personally, up until recently, I despise making behind the scenes content because number one, it means I have to stop whatever I'm doing to film some extra content. And number two, my bloopers aren't always that exciting. I usually don't have a ton of really big mess ups or really funny scenarios. Like it happens every now and then, but a lot of the times I'm really calculated and my bloopers are me just finessing things, figuring out how to make them better, making it work out. And for me, it's also very difficult to do my hair, do my makeup, to get ready all while filming and creating content and being turned on for the sake of teaching or making more content. The props to people who regularly do get ready with me. It's a totally different ballgame. In terms of how much energy goes into the whole process, most videos that I do, even the simplest ones, are planned to a certain degree. I really just decide to get in the cosplay, throw on the camera, and just start going. So that means I'll hear an audio, I'll start to research the manga, I'll research the anime, I'll learn whatever lines I need to learn, figure out any new moves. So prep time alone, just thought processing, is 30 minutes to a week to sometimes even longer. Then there's filming, where I single-handedly have to maneuver four lights so that my camera focus everything, do one shot, adjust everything, do another shot, adjust everything. And then after that, I'm probably filming another two to eight videos to make it worth my time. So then I'm filming multiple videos for about two to 10 hours at a time. And then one video can take, you know, one hour to 24 plus hours to edit. One singular video that can just flop and get 500 views because it's all a gamble. So then the question is, where do I fit in time to do the other things? And that's where the juggling act and time management and figuring out what your actual limitations are comes into play. Like I'm physically capable of doing a lighting tutorial, a behind the scenes, a shot breakdown, but do I actually have the time to produce that? I'd say talking videos like this one are usually a bit easier because it's just me talking. How to or breakdown videos are definitely a lot more difficult because I have to dig through my project files, re-edit things, reorganize, and it totally becomes like a whole new edit. And anytime I film a behind the scenes and you're seeing the actual behind the scenes, that is me actually taking time to plan not only the video itself, but planning extra footage and how to work that into my whole flow. So it's extra brain power and extra manpower. Power. So on a somewhat related note, a lot of people love to criticize my work to the smallest details, and I don't know why I attract so much intense criticism. Even my mutuals have noticed that for some reason I just attract a lot of nitpicky, super nitpicky people. And wrong people, nitpicky and wrong people. <laughs> a lot of people will be like, at five seconds you messed up the energy here, that shot right here is wrong. This is not meant to be a diss, but it's gonna sound like a diss. If you can't tell that I'm already detail oriented, then you probably aren't as detail oriented as you think. <laughs> Most of the things that I miss in my videos are me actually just saving time, not me missing something or forgetting something. It happens, I'm still human, but I'm just saying a lot of the times it is me actually preserving my mental health, preventing burnout, and being healthy about how I create content. Because yes, I can do it all, but actually, I hit my elbow on the light. <laughs> because yes, I can do it all, but actually, I can't do it all. I'm just me. Sometimes I get bored, sometimes I get tired, sometimes I just don't feel like editing something. Sometimes I really don't feel like editing one second for three hours and I'm just like, eh, we'll do the easy route. With all this in mind, this is also why outdoor on location cosplay shoots for me are kind of a special event. Because I don't have to set up my camera, I don't have to walk back and forth to make sure the focus is right. I don't need to be aware of myself and the camera angles in my environment. All of these small things add up and allow me to create an even better product than I can by myself. It can still be tiring though because I do have to take my own thoughts and translate them to another person. And then there's back and forth and friction between what I think is true and what they think is true and how to actually make a cohesive project together. But it's still like a fun glimpse of like what life would be like if I actually had a bunch of resources and support and money and just stuff to be there. And this is not me complaining, this is just me acknowledging limitations, which is something every content creator and artist has to do. But this is also why I will post a trend six months late. I'll post a how-to video the following year. I'll post something a week later than expected because I get tired, I need rest, sometimes I just don't feel like it. Sometimes things get forgotten or mixed up. Occasionally I get accused of milking it or like trying to ride my success, which is both like backhanded and funny because you're acknowledging that I was successful but you also think I'm not successful enough to be able to sustain my own success when really it's just I didn't have the time or energy to post it but since I went through the effort of filming it I want to get it out there to the world even if it's late so yeah I love doing what I do and it's very cool that I can kind of oversee a lot of things and make them how I want them to be but the downsides are going to be that I have time limitations energy limitations sometimes I'm not as good as I want to be and I don't always have someone to go to or have someone who's better than me who's within access who's within my reach that is starting to change a bit because I am starting to have a few more friends to help me out 
every now and then. Like my friend Axel who composited the Tsukuna's domain extension for me and then I edited that into my video myself. So again, it's still me doing editing. But I do want to just remind people, again, I am different. Don't compare other content creators to me. Don't compare me to other content creators. We all have our own limitations. We all have our own things. At the end of the day, I'm just a guy. Honestly, right now in this very moment, I'm supposed to be hanging out with friends, but I'm late filming this video. So I'm gonna be late, go see them. Once I'm done hanging out, come back, edit this video, and then start working on the next video for the next few days. That's how chaotic my schedule can be sometimes. By the way, I forgot to put this in the vlog. I wanna say I don't mind getting suggestions for things. If you're like, hey, would you be willing to do this cosplay? Hey, would you ever be able to make it behind the scenes? I don't mind curiosity. I do mind expecting things from me, not acknowledging that I put in a lot of time and energy and just thinking that I'm just this content machine who can do whatever and whenever for you. It can be a fine line and hard to decipher, but there is a difference. 